Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 8 on graphs of proportional relationships. Now we looked at proportional relationships in the last lesson and we even looked at their graphs. Today we're going to be working with a bunch of different problems where the graphs of proportional relationships are still there and what we want to do is hammer home some really important ideas about these graphs, about their characteristics, how you can recognize graphs as being those of proportional relationships versus those that aren't. So let's get into it right away with the first exercise. Exercise number one. Here we go. An ice cream factory has two machines that produce gallons of ice cream proportional to the amount of time they've been on. Letter A asks us how many gallons of ice cream does machine A produce in three minutes? Use this to determine the unit rate in gallons per minute that machine A is producing. All right, so before we even kind of get into letter A, let's just discuss kind of this graph, right? Definitely proportional by both of them for two reasons. One, they go through the point zero, zero, right? They, they both have values of zero and they're going up in straight lines, all right? Now, in order to kind of calculate rates, what we need to do is we need to have a point that comes off of each one of these. For the first one, it asks us, it kind of sets us up, well, if we're talking about machine A, right, how many gallons of gasoline or gasoline, how many, how many gallons of ice cream has it produced after three minutes? And then we want to figure out a unit rate based on that. So pause the video now. Don't be looking at machine B, just machine A, and see if you can answer question letter A. All right, so here we go, right? We go out to three minutes on the x-axis. We go up and we see that machine A has produced six gallons. So the, the first answer to this is just six gallons. Now, we want to use that fact to create a unit rate. Well, what we know is that it's produced six gallons in three minutes, so we set up that ratio. And now, to convert any ratio into a unit rate, all we have to do is divide the numerator by the denominator, or really simplify the fraction, right? So six thirds is simply equal to two, right? Now remember, we want to have units on this, and specifically the units are going to be gallons per minute, right? Always the units of the numerator per one unit of the denominator, two gallons per minute. Now, right, that's kind of great, because it tells us that for every minute that machine A is on, another two gallons of ice cream are produced. I keep wanting to say gasoline. I don't know why. I don't eat gasoline. Here we go. At least I hope I don't eat gasoline. Let's take a look at letter B, where we do almost the same thing for machine B. How many gallons of ice cream does machine B produce in eight minutes? Use this to determine the unit rate in gallons per minute that machine B is producing. All right, so simple enough, we want to do exactly what we did in letter A, but, spoiler alert, the answer here is going to be a fraction. So take a few minutes, figure out first how many gallons of ice cream machine B produced in eight minutes, then use that fact to produce the unit rate at which machine B is producing ice cream. All right, let's go through it. Here we go. So we go out to eight minutes on the x-axis, we go up and we find four gallons four gallons of ice cream have been produced. So that's the initial answer, four gallons. And we want to change that into a rate. So we first set up this ratio, four gallons to eight minutes. Now, you got to watch out here. You don't want to do, oh, eight divided by four and get two again, because it's not producing two gallons a minute. In fact, what we really have is four divided by eight. We can really just simplify this though, right? Four eighths, as we all know, is simply the fraction one half. And specifically, we are producing one half gallon per minute, right? Now, we've got these two unit rates, right? In letter A, machine A was producing two gallons of ice cream per minute, and letter B, machine B was producing a half a gallon of ice cream per minute. Letter C asks us the following. At what time can we see both answers from parts A and B illustrate on your graph? All right, so 
where can we go on this graph to actually see the unit rates? Do you remember where that was from the last lesson? Well, all we have to do is go to one minute. We simply need to go out to one on this axis. Now, this is going to be a little bit hard for you to see, but at one on this axis, right, if we look at machine A, we're at two gallons per minute. And if we look at machine B, and this is a little bit trickier, we see we're down here at one half gallon per minute. So we can always see the unit rates at one minute or one hour or one whatever on the x-axis, right? And then we literally see the unit rates The unit rates are the y-coordinate. That's why it's so very important to be able to read off coordinate pairs as we discussed in an earlier unit. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at the next problem, exercise number two. Pounds and kilograms are two different units for measuring the weight of an object. The weight in pounds is proportional to the weight in kilograms. The graph below shows this proportional relationship. So in this country, right, we weigh, we do our weights in pounds, right? On the other hand, if you were to go to a European country, or let's be honest, basically anywhere except for the United States, you would find that they measure their weights in kilograms, all right? This graph then shows us the relationship between your weight in kilograms and your weight in pounds. Keep in mind, we can tell immediately from the graph it's a proportional relationship because it goes to the point zero, zero, right? And that makes sense. If I, if I weigh zero kilograms, I'm going to weigh zero pounds. Um, and all the points lie on a straight line. Letter A asks us the following. What does the point 1, 2.2 on this graph tell us? All right, so you can like literally go over to 1, go up, and we're at 2.2. A little bit hard to tell that from right here, but that point lies on the graph. So pause the video now and how it, and tell or explain how you would interpret the point 1, 2.2. All right, well, what we would interpret is that the 1, right, are kilograms, the 2.2 are pounds, so we can actually interpret this as the fact that there are 2.2 pounds per kilogram. 2.2 pounds per kilogram. It's that unit rate, right? For every one kilogram of weight, you have 2.2 pounds of weight. Let's take a look at letter B. If a person weighed 121 pounds, what would his weight be in kilograms. Let K be the weight in kilograms, solve for proportion to find K. All right, so this is pretty easy, right? We have one point on that proportion, which is 1, 2.2, and we know we have 121 pounds. So here's how I might go about doing that. I might say, well, if K is my kilograms and I have 121 pounds, and again, I definitely suggest carrying these units along. Then we can use that unit rate we just saw, one kilogram to 2.2 pounds. Now, how should we solve this? Well, we could certainly go back to cross multiplication. That is simple enough, right? We could cross multiply here and cross multiply here. Let me toss that out of the way. And we're going to drop the units for just the time being. We'd have 2.2 times k is equal to 1 times 121. But that's, of course, just 121. Now comes kind of the ugliness, especially if you're doing this without a calculator, right? We divide 121 by 2.2. Again, without a calculator, we could certainly do this longhand. We would just have to do our sort of our decimal um, movement in the 2.2 to make it a 22, but then we could say, all right, I think 22 goes into 121 five times. Let's take a look. We get 110, subtract, oh, there's another 110, that's another 55, 
and subtract and get zero. It's of course completely okay to be doing this with your calculator at this point given that we've introduced it, but there we have it. K equals 55 kilograms. Whoops. Let me circle it so we can tell. Again, probably quicker right, to do it with a calculator, especially after you've kind of set up the equation work here, than rather than do the long division. But easy enough as well. All right, let's keep going. What do we have next? Ah, a tortoise, otherwise known as a turtle. Or maybe they're not the same thing. Anyway, exercise number three. A tortoise is moving at a steady rate such that it travels a total of three meters over a period of five minutes. Tortoises are very slow, as we all know. Um, and we can kind of, we can see this, right, just on this double number line, right? We can use double, double number lines to help us sort of think about proportional variables or think about ratios, right? So what we can see is this idea that after five minutes, the tortoise is at a distance of three meters. Let's take a look at letter A. Using long division, find the unit rate that the tortoise is traveling at in meters per minute. All right, this one's a little bit trickier and you definitely have to use long division to do it if you don't have a calculator. Why don't you go ahead, set up this problem, and figure out the unit rate in meters per minute that the tortoise is traveling. Now, we have to be careful about this, right? Three meters over five minutes and we wanna know the rate in meters per minute. That means the meters, the distance measurement has to be in the numerator and the time measurement has to be in the denominator. In other words, we start by setting up the following ratio. Three meters per five minutes. Now, if I want that as a decimal, what I'm gonna have to do is go over here and divide three by five. Of course, I can do that longhand by changing the three into a 3.0. Of course, five goes into three zero times. When I do my subtraction, I then end up with a 30. Put my decimal point up here, 5 goes into 36 times. Subtract, and I get 0. So here we go, right? So we get 0 0.6 meters per minute. Not a lot of room there, but I think we can sneak it in. 0.6 meters per minute. In other words, the tortoise is moving at less than a meter per minute, and that makes sense because if it was moving at exactly one meter per minute, then after five minutes, it would have gone five meters. But it hasn't gotten that far. It's only gotten three meters. Let's take a look at the second portion of this problem. Letter B, show your answer from part A, 0.6, on the graph and the double number line. All right. In other words, where can we find this answer, 0.6 meters per minute, truly on both the graph of the proportional relationship and even on the double number line? Think about that for a moment. Pause the video now. All right, well, let's take a look at it on the double number line first. It's kind of cool. It's all about going to where one is on the x-axis. In this case, the x-axis is time. Up here, that's right here. So if we go to one right here and we simply go directly vertical up to here, we see that's 0.6. In other words, after one minute, the turtle has traveled 0.6 meters. Likewise, down on this graph, we can see it by going to one minute here, simply going up to the graph, here's my point, come over here and it's also at 0.6. All right. So we really want to harp on that idea that if you want to visualize or you want to see the unit rate on the graph of a proportional relationship, you can always see it as the y value when the x value is equal to 1. All right, let's wrap this thing up. We didn't see a lot that was new today. All we were really doing was working with graphs of proportional relationships using them to also kind of figure out what the unit rate was and then reiterating the idea that the unit rate can always be found on a graph of a proportional relationship. When the x value is one, then the y value gives you that unit rate. We'll work with this a bit more in the coming lessons. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.